The Pacific Ring of Fire just struck again. Another earthquake. Another reminder that millions of people live on one of the most dangerous geological features on Earth. This 25,000-mile horseshoe of destruction circles the Pacific Ocean. It passes through Japan, the Philippines, Indonesia, New Zealand, Chile, California, and Alaska. It contains 75% of the world's active volcanoes. And 90% of the world's earthquakes happen here. But what is the Ring of Fire? Why does it exist? And why do countries like the Philippines, Japan, and Indonesia keep experiencing deadly earthquakes while other parts of the world stay relatively safe? Today, we're explaining the Pacific Ring of Fire, the geological feature that makes the Pacific Rim the most seismically active region on Earth. Let's start with what the Ring of Fire actually is. Imagine a massive horseshoe wrapping around the Pacific Ocean. It starts in New Zealand, runs up through Indonesia and the Philippines, continues through Japan and the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, then down the west coast of North and South America, through California, Mexico, Central America, and ending in Chile. This isn't just a line on a map. It's a zone of intense tectonic activity, a belt of volcanoes, earthquake faults, and subduction zones where the Earth's crust is constantly grinding, colliding, and being destroyed. The ring contains about 452 volcanoes. That's three quarters of all active volcanoes on Earth. Mount Fuji in Japan, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, Mount St. Helens in the United States, the volcanoes of Indonesia, they're all part of the ring. But volcanoes are just the visible symptoms. The real story is what's happening beneath the surface. The ring of fire exists because of plate tectonics, the movement of massive slabs of the Earth's crust. The Earth's outer layer isn't one solid shell. It's broken into about 15 major tectonic plates and dozens of smaller ones. These plates float on the semi-molten mantle below, moving at about the same speed your fingernails grow, 2 to 10 centimeters per year. That might not sound like much, but over millions of years, it's enough to move continents, build mountain ranges, and create ocean trenches. And where these plates meet, that's where the action happens. The Pacific Plate is the largest oceanic plate on Earth, it covers most of the Pacific Ocean floor, and it's surrounded by other major plates, the North American Plate, the Eurasian Plate, the Australian Plate, the Nazca Plate, and several smaller ones. The Ring of Fire marks the boundaries where the Pacific Plate collides with these surrounding plates. And collides is the right word. These aren't gentle meetings. They're violent, grinding, catastrophic collisions that have been happening for millions of years. There are three types of plate boundaries, but the ring of fire is dominated by one specific type, subduction zones. A subduction zone is where one tectonic plate is forced beneath another. In the case of the ring of fire, oceanic plates, like the Pacific plate, are diving beneath continental plates or other oceanic plates. Here's why that happens. Oceanic crust is denser than continental crust. When an oceanic plate meets a continental plate, the denser oceanic plate gets pushed down into the mantle. It's like trying to make two pieces of wood fit in the same space. One has to give way, and it's always the heavier one. As the oceanic plate descends, it creates a deep ocean trench. These trenches are some of the deepest places on Earth. The Mariana Trench in the Western Pacific is over 36,000 feet deep, deeper than Mount Everest is tall but subduction doesn't happen smoothly. The plates don't just slide past each other. They lock together. Friction holds them in place. Pressure builds over decades or centuries. And then, suddenly, they slip. That sudden release of energy is an earthquake. And because the entire ring of fire is made up of subduction zones, earthquakes happen constantly. Small ones, big ones, devastating ones. Let's talk about specific regions of the Ring of Fire and why they're so dangerous. Start in Japan, the Japanese archipelago sits where four tectonic plates meet, the Pacific Plate, the Philippine Sea Plate, the Eurasian Plate, and the North American Plate. All four are pushing against each other, 
making Japan one of the most seismically active places on Earth. Japan experiences about 1,500 earthquakes per year. Most are small, but the big ones are catastrophic. The 2011 Tohoku earthquake was magnitude 9.0, one of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded. It triggered a tsunami that killed over 18,000 people and caused the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Move south to the Philippines. The Philippines sits at the junction of the Pacific Plate, the Philippine Sea Plate, the Eurasian Plate, and the Sunda Plate. Unlike Japan, which sits on the edge of the ring, the Philippines is trapped in the middle. Seven major trenches surround the archipelago. The Manila Trench to the west, the East Luzon Trench to the east, the Philippine Trench in the Pacific, the Cotabato Trench near Mindanao. All of them are subduction zones. All of them are building pressure, and the Philippines experiences over 100 earthquakes per year because of it. The 1976 Moro Gulf earthquake killed 8,000 people with a tsunami. The 1990 Luzon earthquake killed over 1,600. The 2013 Bohol earthquake killed more than 200. And the earthquakes keep coming. Keep moving down the ring to Indonesia. Indonesia is the most volcanically active country on Earth. It has more than 130 active volcanoes because it sits directly on the boundary where the Australian plate is subducting beneath the Eurasian plate. The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, magnitude 9.1, struck off the coast of Sumatra. The resulting tsunami killed 230,000 people across 14 countries. It was one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history. Indonesia also has Krakatoa, the volcano whose 1883 eruption was one of the most violent in history. The explosion was heard 3,000 miles away, and the tsunami killed over 36,000 people. Now jump across the Pacific to the Americas. The Ring of Fire runs down the entire west coast of North and South America. In the United States, the Cascadia subduction zone sits off the coast of Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. It's capable of producing magnitude 9. Zero earthquakes and tsunamis that would devastate the Pacific Northwest. The last major rupture was in 1700, and geologists say it's overdue. California has the San Andreas Fault, which isn't technically a subduction zone. It's a transform boundary where plates slide past each other. But it's still part of the broader Ring of Fire system, and it's capable of magnitude 8.0 earthquakes that could destroy major cities. Move down to Central and South America. Mexico City sits on ancient lake beds that amplify seismic waves, making earthquakes there especially deadly. The 1985 earthquake killed at least 10,000 people. Chile has experienced some of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded. The 1960 Valdivia earthquake was magnitude 9.5, the strongest earthquake in recorded history. It triggered tsunamis that traveled across the Pacific, killing people in Hawaii, Japan, and the Philippines. So why does the Ring of Fire cause so many earthquakes while other parts of the world are relatively stable? It comes down to plate boundaries. Not all boundaries are created equal. The Atlantic Ocean, for example, has a spreading ridge down its center. The plates are moving apart, not colliding. This creates gentle volcanic activity in places like Iceland, but it doesn't produce the massive subduction zone earthquakes that plague the Pacific. The middle of continents, places like Central Europe, the interior of the United States, or most of Africa, sit far from plate boundaries. These areas experience very few earthquakes because there's no tectonic activity. The crust is stable. But the Pacific? It's surrounded by colliding plates. The entire ocean is ringed by subduction zones. It's a geological pressure cooker, and the earthquakes are how that pressure gets released. Now let's address a common question. Is the ring of fire getting more active? Are earthquakes increasing? The short answer is no. Statistically, the frequency of major earthquakes has remained relatively stable over the past century. We're not experiencing more earthquakes than before. What has changed is our ability to detect them. A century ago, only the strongest earthquakes were recorded. Today, sensitive seismographs detect even minor tremors. So it seems like there are more earthquakes, 
but we're just measuring them better. What has also changed is population. More people live in earthquake-prone areas than ever before. Tokyo, Manila, Jakarta, Los Angeles, Santiago. These are massive cities sitting directly on or near major fault lines. When an earthquake strikes, the death toll and economic damage are much higher because more people are at risk. Climate change is sometimes mentioned in connection with seismic activity. The reality is that climate change has minimal impact on earthquakes. Earthquakes are driven by tectonic forces deep in the earth, far below the surface processes affected by climate. Melting glaciers might theoretically reduce weight on tectonic plates, but the effect is negligible compared to the forces already at play. The ring of fire isn't getting worse. It's not shifting. It's not becoming more dangerous. It's doing exactly what it's always done, releasing the energy from colliding tectonic plates. So what does the future hold for the ring of fire? First, understand that this isn't going away. As long as plate tectonics continues, which will be for hundreds of millions of years, the ring of fire will keep producing earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Certain regions are considered overdue for major earthquakes. The Cascadia subduction zone in the Pacific Northwest hasn't had a major rupture since 1700. Geologists estimate it ruptures every 300 to 600 years, meaning we're well within the window for the next big one. The Manila Trench in the Philippines hasn't produced a major tsunami in living memory, but geological evidence shows it's capable. The Marikina Valley Fault running through Metro Manila hasn't moved significantly in over 200 years, but it's capable of a magnitude 7.2 earthquake that would devastate the capital. Japan knows another massive earthquake will strike eventually. Indonesia knows its volcanoes will erupt again. Chile knows the subduction zone off its coast will produce another magnitude 8.0 or 9.0 quake. The only question is when. For the 500 million people living along the Ring of Fire, preparation is critical. Japan has strict building codes, tsunami warning systems, and regular earthquake drills. The Philippines has five volcanoes monitoring seismic activity. The United States has early warning systems on the West Coast. But preparedness varies. Some countries and regions are better equipped than others. And even with the best preparation, a magnitude 9.0 earthquake will cause catastrophic damage. The Ring of Fire is a reminder that humans live on a dynamic, constantly changing planet. The ground beneath our feet is not solid and stable. It's moving, grinding, colliding, and the energy from those collisions has to go somewhere. For millions of years, that energy has been released as earthquakes and volcanoes. And for millions of years to come, it will continue. We call it the Pacific Ring of Fire, but it's not a single feature. It's a series of boundaries where the Pacific Plate meets its neighbors. It's a belt of subduction zones, transform faults, and volcanic arcs. It's the most seismically active region on Earth, and it's not going anywhere. If you live along the Ring of Fire, whether in California, the Philippines, Japan, Chile, or anywhere else, understanding this system is the first step to surviving it. Know your local faults, know your evacuation routes, have an earthquake plan, because the ring of fire doesn't take breaks. It doesn't give warnings. It just keeps releasing the energy from tectonic plates that have been colliding for millions of years. 90% of the world's earthquakes happen here. 75% of the world's volcanoes are here. And 500 million people call it home. The Pacific Ring of Fire. The most dangerous geological feature on Earth. And the reason countries like the Philippines will never stop shaking. What part of the Ring of Fire are you closest to? Let me know in the comments. And if you want more videos about the geological threats around the Pacific, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because understanding the Ring of Fire might just save your life.